Next, I'm going to talk about how to choose a frame for your quadcopter. So there are three main types of frames in the hobby world, and they are racing frames, freestyle frames, and cinewhoop frames. They're usually constructed out of 3K carbon fiber due to its high strength to weight ratio. 3K is short for 3000, and it's the number of carbon fiber strands in each toe of the material. Carbon fiber is conductive, so we have to be really careful making sure that the electronics don't short out on it. Racing frames are usually fairly minimalistic so that they can be as light as possible and usually have the battery mounted underneath. The downside being that you will be landing on the battery potentially damaging it and because racing frames are lighter I tend to find that they are more affected by the wind and more twitchy in general but this doesn't matter so much because the end goal is to be fast with a racing frame. Freestyle frames have the battery mounted on top and weigh a lot more because of this but that's usually a good thing because freestyle quads are all about smooth aerobatic flying and getting smooth video and a heavier quad cuts through the air better than a lighter one the top mounted battery gives the quad a better center of gravity as well as protecting the battery in a crash the frame is usually elongated at the front so that an action camera can be mounted without getting the props in shot which gives cinematographers a unique view compared to other drones and filmmaking tools. Cinewhoops are less about aerobatics and more about getting protected, stabilised footage in proximity to people and property. This build is going to be a 5 inch build, meaning that the props are 5 inches in diameter. This is the most popular size of quadcopter due to its power capabilities while being able to lift a decent sized HD camera. However, smaller quadcopters such as 4 inch and 3 inch models are as popular these days, especially in countries where being under 250 grams is important for drone regulations. You might wonder why not do something different and go for a 6 or 7 inch build and I tend to find especially for a first time build you are more likely to run into vibration problems with a bigger prop. So this build is going to be a 5 inch build. You may have seen tricopters which use 3 motors and a servo for control but these don't fly as smoothly as quadcopters and are much harder to set up. There's also much less information about them as well. And as for multi-rotors with more than four motors, there's just more to go wrong. So more ESCs to burn up and more motors that could fail. And there's also less information and research done on them as well in terms of getting them to fly well compared to quadcopters. So under the freestyle and racing frames, there is a subcategory of different arm layouts, such as the true X arm layout, meaning that all of the arms are 90 degrees to each other. This is perhaps the strongest layout when you have a crash due to the load going straight down the arm. But the downside is that the arms get in the view of the FPV camera, but usually a secondary HD camera can be mounted high enough on top of the frame to mitigate that. A variation on the true X is the stretched X configuration. This is more popular with racing frames, but you can get them on freestyle frames as well. The idea being that when the quad is in forward motion, the disrupted airflow of the front props doesn't interfere with the back ones. The downside being that you get even more props in view, which isn't a problem for racing. However, I tend to find for freestyle, the stretched X doesn't perform as well when doing racing rolls, it's better for forward motion in racing. Then the opposite to the stretched X is the squished X, which is more popular with freestyle frames to try and get the props more out of shot than a true X while retaining most of the strength of a true X. And to this day, it's probably my favorite configuration of frame, but it's becoming less popular. The same goes for H frames, which are really rare these days, but they do a great job of getting the props out of shot. 
Since the release of the DJI Digital FPV system, the Dead Cat type frame has seen a resurgence. Now, I won't go into why it's called a Dead Cat configuration, but essentially, it's a frame that gets the arms and the props completely out of shot. So if you are running a DJI Digital system, you can fully rely on the HD camera feed for your FPV feed, but also your HD recording without any props in shot. The downside are huge though because the front arms stick out sideways leaving them susceptible to getting hit side on in a crash and breaking more easily than a Truex. The back arms on a dead cat configuration have to be longer as well to get the motors away from the center of the frame which sends the weight up higher and even then the back two motors end up closer together than the front two in most cases. This means that the front two motors have to work harder in general than the back ones and it often leads them to overheat for the compensation, making them less efficient than other configurations. You will notice that some of the older frames have wider arms, and this is because the electronic speed controllers used to be individual for each motor and therefore needed the space on the arm to mount them. But as all-in-one speed controllers became more popular, the arms could get thinner to save weight. But this does mean that they aren't quite as strong as they used to be. Manufacturers compensate for this by making the arms deeper in thickness, with the standard now being five or six millimeters compared to three or four millimeters on older frames. Most 5-inch frames have individual arms so that they can be replaced in a crash. You will see some unibody frames on smaller models because it saves a lot of weight, but you forfeit by having to replace the entire plate if something breaks in a crash. Toothpick frames can either be freestyle or racing frames, but the one thing they have in common is to be as light as possible so that they are inconspicuous to fly. The same goes for tiny whoop frames, which have protected around them so that they can be flown safely indoors and not damage people or property. So as this is a 5 inch freestyle build, what frame should you choose? Well, it's likely that beginners to the hobby will be watching this, so it's important to get the best out of your cash. The last thing you want to do is pile $120 or 120 GBP into a top-end frame for it to break the first time you fly because you crashed. This used to lead me to recommend a cheap Chinese clone frame such as the Martian from Real ACC. It used to cost around 13 GBP compared to the 120 GBP that I paid for the original Impulse Alien, which is hard to justify as a beginner, especially if you could end up breaking it. The only problem with using a cloned frame is that the money doesn't go back into the development of the hobby. And while you might not care about this, it is important. I also find that some of the cloned frames, especially ones from Real ACC, don't have the best quality carbon. It can be a lottery whether you get a good one or not because they don't replace the tooling as often as higher quality products. Another reason for not recommending the Martian these days is that it doesn't have any 20x20 20 20 mounting options for components, which we see more of these days, especially if you want to go digital. Luckily, Team Black Sheep have gotten around this by making frames cheaper with their TBS Source 1. This build was going to be done with the Source 1 V3 frame, but they've just released the V4 version. My only concern with the V4 is that the arms are only 4mm thick to make it lighter, so the V3 might still be a good option to try. I paid around 27 GBP for it from a local retailer, and they are available in most good online drone shops. I wouldn't knock anyone buying a cloned frame though, because most of the time people don't know that they have bought one, and I do believe that once a beginner has had their money's worth out of the cloned frame, they will move on to the real deal once they have more confidence in their own ability, and I only say that because it's exactly what I did. The downside of going for a bare bones cheap frame, whether it be the Source 1 or the Martian frame, either way, is that you don't get any of the 3D printed accessories for your antennas and any other peripherals. However, you can buy aftermarket 3D printed parts from places like Brain3D, like I have done. 
You might find that buying a frame from iFlight such as the XL5 comes to a similar price than the Source One once you have added up all of the 3D printed accessories that you might need. Of course you can compromise and use cable ties and things like that but it's not as neat. Whereas an iFlight frame will come with all of the accessories you need. But for this build I'm going to be sticking with the TBS Source One frame. 